I'm going to share with you seven problems beginner have with Substance Designer. And these are the exact same problems I was having five years ago when starting out to learn material art to become a professional. They caused me a lot of anger and frustration. But today, I'm going to show you also seven ways of how to fix them so it doesn't happen to you and you can have an easy fix to move forward to your next step. Starting in this list is problem number one, and that is a steep learning curve. Substance Designer is quite a complex software to learn, and there are actually four main reasons for this. It has too many nodes. Substance Design has hundreds of nodes in there, and it's really hard to learn them all. Even I, after five years working as a professional material artist, I haven't been able to use them all, and they keep adding more to it every single year. Now, you also have complex workflows with Substance Designer, would make this even really more difficult for beginners to get into this when the actual workflow is really different to other 3D softwares. You're also going to find yourself with the lack of learning resources. You might have a lot of really nice YouTube tutorials and even free tutorials from ArtStation Learning. However, you don't find much information about how to use this software in a professional way to become a material artist of the industry. There's also a lot of complicated tech information in this area, which not many people know about, and you need to need a lot of math. In fact, I've done it in the past when I was trying to learn and you have a video for this that is called the current blur. You also have a lot of complicated touch information and many people really struggle with this because again you have to learn basic math and image processing and apply it to Substance Designer with tools you don't even know or they're not even written about. All of this is making you go slower when you're trying to learn this software from start but I happen to know how you can practice to overcome this steep learning curve and learn step by step every aspect that you need. Choose a pattern as your first material. These are usually really easy to build. Focus on building a single shape for this pattern. Try identifying basic shapes in your reference and then in Substance Designer replicate the single shape you have breakdown and integrate this into a pattern. This will help you practice the core of the workflow in Substance Designer. However, we still need to fix the tech information and many notes you don't know about in Substance Designer. When working in Substance Designer, always keep your library on the site and take some hours a day to explore different notes. Focus on this section and try mixing different notes from there. And if you have any doubt about them, you can go to Google and search for the name of the note plus Substance Designer, and it's gonna give you exactly the space in the documentation of Adobe with the right explanation of what the note does. Now, all of this is a small exercise I would try to do every single day for at least one to two hours, trying to have fun making different patterns to start with the most easy and simple materials, which are tile materials. Materials that have tiles and do not have much of organic shapes like for example grounds, soils or rock surfaces. Problem number two, weird artifacts in our normal or other height maps. Sometimes when you export your textures and you try to use them, you're going to realize there's some really weird artifacts in your normal map and height map. That is not because of your expert settings, but because your images have a low resolution of bits. In this case, 8 bits. Every node in Substance Designer has this information below. When you have C8, this means the image is at 8 bits, and when it's 16L, it holds 16 bits. Now, these two are not meant to be mixed inside Substance Designer, but sometimes out of experience it might happen. And I'm going to show you two situations where you are really messing up your bitmaps and causing these artifacts in your outputs. First situation is when you connect an 8-bit image to a thread of 16-bit images. All nodes in Substance have their base parameters set to copy the input parameters of the previous node. With this, our node will have the same base properties as the node that comes before. That is why it changes. However, it has an easy fix. Go to the base parameters and click on this icon and set the bitrate to 16 bits. This will update the rest of the nodes and fix your problem. Another situation is when you try to use the blend node as a connector. Why the hell would you do that? There's actually another feature in Sub Substance Designer that is called the dot nodes that allow you to actually connect nodes and move the lines in between them to organize your graph even better. Now, the blend node has three inputs. One of them is for opacity, but the other two are for the two different images you need to input. If you connect only one set of information to these inputs and you leave the other one empty, what's going to happen is that the blend node is going to switch to 8 bits, making a disaster because as, as I mentioned before, what's going to happen is that the next node is going to take the information from the blend node and it's going to basically copy the other line. So because of one blend node that you misused, now all of your images are set to 8 bits. Now the quick fix for this is actually using the right tool for the right job. There's no need to use a blend node in that way and by not using the dot nodes, you are missing on a great feature of Substance Designer 
called portal nodes. This allows us to connect information into a dot, give it a name, and then create another dot that works as an output from the first dot, allowing us to move the information around our graph without having to add more lines to our spaghetti graph. Now, these are the two most common mistakes when creating artifacts. If you happen to know more of them and you have some doubts on how to fix them, you can actually leave it in the comments and I'll try to figure out for you. Now, problem number three is actually unexpected results outside of Substance Designer. Substance Designer allows us to create procedural tallable textures in our graphs, and that's the most powerful use it has, and it was invented to create these textures. Now, the 3D view you have in Substance Designer is just a preview so that you can see what you're working and what the actual result is in 3D. This has nothing to do to the result that you're gonna see in Unreal Engine and Marmoset. Now, why is that happening? Well, because the softwares are made different. In fact, there's a huge difference between the ray tracing in Unreal Engine and the ray tracing in Marmoset. Now, the biggest question you have right now is why does this happen? And the reason this happens is basically because the way they were built are, again, really different. Marmoset was built specifically for rendering. It's a software where you can do a lot of other things like baking and animations, but rendering was the main object of the software. And one of the best features it has is ray tracing. Now, as Marmoset doesn't count with any other features for lighting, it makes them easier for them to really focus on ray tracing, getting way better results. Now, on the other hand, Unreal Engine was working with ray tracing, but took a bet to start using Lumen. And from there, they actually start to put all their money and energy into that. That's why if you go into Unreal Engine, you're most probably gonna have a better result using Lumen than ray tracing. Now, why do we care about this? Because lighting is what helps us see everything in real life. Lighting is going to decide exactly how things will look in our render. So we are seeing our material in Substance Designer, and it's not where we're going to render. So depending where you're going to be rendered, I do recommend to do the next to fix this problem. Have a small pre-made scene where you will get in there and test your material. For example, I have mine. I show it in a previous video. I have a pre-made scene where I import all my materials in there to check how they're doing. And what I call this is a fast render or a quick check. This quick check is basically while I'm working on material and I feel I have doubts about how it's looking, I go to Marmoset where I have a small scene set up and I apply my material and do a quick render and see what's working and what's not working. Believe it or not, this saves me a lot of time because it's showing me in the place I want to end my product, how it's looking and why it's not working. Problem number four, optimization and performance issues. One of the most daunting problems inside Substance Designer. And the main reason for this is because you don't know why your graph is actually working so slow and your nodes are not even loading. As any other software in game art, this consumes a lot of resources. Now, when we talk about resources, we usually talk about memory. Your computer has a specific amount of memory. Now, you can increase that memory or lower than the memory, and that's gonna allow you to use more or less resources. Now, when we work in Substance Designer, Substance Designer has a limited amount of memory that it takes from you. The more information we add to our textures or the more nodes we use in Substance Designer, the heavier it's gonna get for us because the more resources we are using. This is why sometimes large graphs take a lot of time to load and even happens that it doesn't even end loading. You might even have a material where the base color doesn't load because it's so big that you're not being able to render the base color part. I found that you can fix this in two ways and you can also identify when are you having a memory problem in Substance Designer. Now, for the fix number one, we are going to create a dedicated section for reusable nodes with portal dots. Instead of creating a new cloud 2 every time you want to perform organic results, make one of them. Set the parameters to random and set up a portal node with a specific name. Now, you can use this node several times without making a mess of your graph. And if you choose to do the same with other simple, similar nodes, then you can work different aspects of your material with more details and variation. For example, if you want nodes similar to the Perlin noise, you can also go for a Gaussian noise or you can even go for a Gaussian dots and combine this with the levels and a slow blur and get a different result to make something new. Now for fix number two, we need to actually see how much memory we're consuming. And the reason we are taking care of these and how many nodes we use is just because of that. All of our nodes are being rendered by Samsung Designer and that is what is consuming your memory. Down here, you will see this number that will tell you how much memory you're using. And if you put your mouse on top of it, you will see how much memory you have available and it's in use. Working in higher resolution will eat even more of your memory. So so if you're having performance issues after trying to fix one, go to your graph and look for this area. You can now lower the resolution of all the graph and this won't affect the images that you export. 
only the images you are working with. However, this might not be enough and we will have to focus on this color number. Now, this number tells us how many milliseconds it takes our computer to render this node. When I say our computer, I say it this way because it depends on the computer that we are using. Maybe in my computer, a level of nodes will take one millisecond, but maybe in another computer, it might take even less or more to five milliseconds. Your hard work is really important for this part. Now, these numbers have a color. You have seen it in the image before. They have a green color. Now, this color can go from green to red, depending on the heavy load of they have. As you start adding nodes, the color will change if you add a node that is heavier than the last one. This is a super useful tool from Substance Designer because it allows us to actually see where we are using a really heavy node that we could replace with something simpler. Some nodes in Substance Designer, like for example, the tile sampler are super heavy. Regardless, you can actually do the same with the tile generator. The only thing you need to do is see if you are using the actual features that the tile sampler offers. And if you're not using them and you're using exactly the same features that the tile generator offers, just go for the tile generator. You can save some memory in there and be more efficient. Now, problem number five might be even the most frustrating of all the problems in here. And that is basically troubleshooting your nodes to find where you have a glitch. While we are working on Samsung Designer, we start to see in our outcome that there's some issues that we generated by choosing wrong noises or a combination of nodes that they are not looking really good and we want to change them. But now our graph looks like this. Usually these are artifacts that we created without knowing them because we didn't have the right experience. And because of that, now they are kind of like ruining our work and we want to remove them. But our graph is so big that we really don't know how to find it. Now, I have a small technique that is really simple, easy, and silly that will help you actually get this done and find the problem in your graph so you can remove it. Instead of going over all your graph and disconnecting every single part, we are gonna do the inverse. We're gonna go to the end of our graph, we're gonna create a normal node and increase the intensity to five. Now we're gonna connect this normal node to the last node of our graph and we're gonna start to connect our normal node to each blend node or hide blend node that comes before. The reason for this is we're trying to see when does this mistake disappear. When you connect your normal map to a blend node where this mistake has disappeared, this means that you have found your mistake. The node you were connected before is actually the place where your problem was. So now you can already fix that from there or even disconnect it and get rid of the problem. Problem number six, workflow bottlenecks in the pipeline. When we want to use our textures in other software like Unreal Engine, we need to manually drop them there. And we need to do this for every material that we create for a scene or environment. Anytime we need a change, we need to reopen Substance Designer, change parameters, re-export, and then re-update inside Unreal Engine. And that's actually quite a long job to make one single change, like a little bit of tile rotation. Now, this might cite quite a long, a long process, but there's actually one add-on in Unreal Engine that will solve this really fast. This add-on allows you to open your exposed parameters inside Unreal Engine, giving you the chance to actually change these parameters and change your material live in Unreal Engine and re-updating the textures that you are exporting. Now, the concept of this add-on was super powerful, yet, it really didn't make it that far. Why? Because it was not really the best option and it wasn't really efficient. I really never heard about it anymore after some years. And to be honest, I don't even use it because I don't feel it's necessary because there's other ways you can organize your workflow to get a more efficient way of transferring information from one software to the other. Now, if you're working on a scene and you're working with several textures, what you can do is basically set everything in the same Substance Designer file. Instead of making different Substance Designer files, make just one Substance Design package and inside of there make different graphs. If they are all of the same family, like for example what I did here with my concrete material, then you can have them all next to the other ones. Or even better, you can create a master graph for exporting. In order to do this, create two substance graphs where you're going to be doing each material. In this case, it will be these different type of concrete materials that I'm doing for this scene that we're going to be teaching you in one of our next tutorials. Once you have this, do a third substance graph and import in there the other two substance graphs. They're going to import as material. Grab the output nodes and duplicate them and change their names and give them a right name so that you can make a difference between them. Now, when you're going to export, export all of these textures together, but to a single folder in your computer. The reason we are doing this is because then when we go to Unreal Engine, with one click, we can go to this folder, select all images and import them. And then we can move them around to new folders. And if we want to re-update, we can re-update all textures at the same time. And the best part is that in Substance Designer, you can choose 
exactly what part you want to export. So if you're exporting only one material, you just need to tick the material that you want to export. I wish I could give you a better solution like the magic add-on I was talking about first, but unfortunately there is not. And so far this has worked really well for me. Now in our Qscore community, there was some talking about a new script made with Python that could help you actually export different images in different formats at the same time. Now I haven't tested yet and I haven't talk with the creator about it, but maybe in the future we could share this if he agrees to making it. But for the moment, having a file like this one to allow it so that you can export these images all at the same time, I think it's maybe a really smart way of doing this. Problem number seven, and the main problem that everyone has in Substance Designer, and it's making crazy design changes at the end of your material. Making incremental changes or refining your material at the end of the process it's usually really hard, especially if you need to start over again in order to make those changes. And that's actually quite normal and it happens to a lot of beginners and sometimes to professionals. The reason this happens is because we have a poor design. And to fix these problems, we need to ask ourselves where does design start in the material art process? Design starts in the very first end and that is the research. Normally, people just look around for images in Google and Pinterest and just grab what it looks similar to what they want to do and drop it into your peer graph. And that's the reference. And after that, they just jump directly to work in Substance Designer. And that is what's killing your process and creating a problem in the future. When you gather your reference, plan on every single thing you want to add to your material and save an image that gives you a visual reference of that specific detail you want to add. Start by identifying the pattern. What are the different shapes it holds? How can we break them down? Follow this with every single part of your material and once you have that, draw a step-by-step -step guide of what you will be creating first in your graph. Here's an example of one of my latest projects and it allowed me to achieve a really great result like the one you are seeing on screen right now. Yes, the biggest problem you have has the easiest solution of them all. And it's not a problem on the software, it's a problem on how you prepare yourself to actually make new materials. And believe it or not, this is the main problem a lot of students have with Substance Designer. You are not planning your material on time. You are not planning your material to be something specific, so you start throwing things inside of Substance Designer trying to get a good result. This is similar to cooking without a recipe. You just start throwing ingredients to the oven till something comes out. And most of the times what is going to come out, it's something really bad. Now, every single advice I gave you to this in this class is something I did to overcome the problems I found years ago when I started to learn material art and master substance designer. It caused me a lot of frustration, anger, and even the desire to give up at that moment. In my story, all of this helped me to actually become a better material artist and in fact, a professional material artist. However, this is just the start and there's way more I want to share with you so that you can make the textures that you love. Now, if you want to start practicing these new advices in a new project, I recommend that you go over our cobblestone tutorial, which is actually quite complete. Try to lower the speed of the video so that you can see what parameters I'm using and try to see into the design I generated for my material. Even if I'm talking about design, try to give it a chance because that's actually where you're failing most probably and is what you really need to make any kind of art. You need a good fundament so that you can keep building great stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.